Hello, family and friends of St. Richard's Episcopal School. Welcome to our G3 celebration for 2021. I'm Will Williams, Director of Development and Major Gifts here at St. Richard's. And it's my pleasure to welcome all of you and to thank you for being with us today. As all of you know, 2020 was an extraordinary year in so many ways. And as such, it's unfortunate that this year we were unable to come together for our annual G3 celebration with our dinner at the Woodstock Country Club. Nonetheless, we hope that in some way this draws all of us together as a community as we come here to celebrate this great school that we so hold dearly and love. As we come together to celebrate the three G's of St. Richard's, goodness, gumption, and grit, we are reminded about all of the goodness and the traditions of this school that have helped so many generations before us and the current generations of dragons so that they can be truly lifelong learners who make differences in their communities and in the world. 60 years since we opened our doors here at St. Richard's, and it's because of the goodness, the gumption, and the grit of our alumni, of our parents and our grandparents, and so many friends of this school. So while we celebrate our G3 event this year in a different way, nonetheless, the spirit of our G3 dinner is with us, which is to celebrate those three Gs and to know that because of your support, your love, and your dedication of this school, we are able to have a bright future, even in the midst of an unusual and odd pandemic year like 2020. The future is very bright, and it's because of your kindness, your goodness, your gumption, and your grit that strengthens who we are as a school. And so as we celebrate these three Gs, we will hear today from some special speakers who will speak about how great this school is and what an impact it has on the lives of our students and their families, and how it is that you can play a vital role in securing that bright future and helping us to move forward with hope. So welcome to G3 this year. Well, first up, as we celebrate our annual event for the three Gs at St. Richard's Episcopal School of Goodness, Gumption and Grit, is our very own chaplain, Father Ben Anthony, who's here uh, today to speak to us a little bit about the goodness that we have at St. Richard's. Father Ben, first and foremost, thank you for being here. We appreciate having you, appreciate all you do for our school. Could you, could you speak a little bit about goodness? You know, I think goodness is, um, we often think about it, I think as something that's produced by pressures from outside of us, something goodness is elicited from us. And I think one of the things that St. Richard's does well and does differently is the way in which it produces goodness as something that emerges out of an individual um, something that we give them through the repetitions, through chapel, uh, through inter encounters with uh, good and caring and intelligent teachers, and also by reinforcing the, the relationships that they are to have one another and the expectations to be, to be good friends to one another, to make new friends, um, to be willing to offer forgiveness and show compassion when it's warm. And so what I think it makes St. Richard's different in that regard, um, and the way to, I think, illustrate that, or one way to illustrate that is to think about the way we end chapel. Every chapel service we end with the singing of day by day, um, the, the prayer of St. Richard of Chichester, in which the person speaking those words asks God day by day to do these things, to follow God more nearly, um, to love God more dearly, and to see God more clearly. That these are things that happen, these are habits that develop over a lifetime. What is it that, that you think uh, is unique about St. Richard's, that people stay so involved with this school, this community, uh, even after they've left? For me, I'll just speak for me, and, and, this, and I'll step slightly out of the role of chaplain and into my role as the parent of Francis. I've seen over her now three years here at St. Richard's, her blossom into this fascinating, intelligent, inquisitive uh, child with close friends and then friends that are, you know, maybe not quite as close, but folks that she's always welcome to and happy to see when she sees them on the playground, um, that she's willing to incorporate into, into her life. She knows when she walks around the adults that recognize her, um, she sees returned to her the affection that she gives to her teachers. And that exchange, that kind of mutual exchange of respect and affection, um, it's a small thing and it's something that can go by unnoticed, 
Um, but when you when looking back over several years, um, it's evident that that's that love between student and teacher that that's brought out something um, that the best of my child. And I think that's that's I don't know if that's unique about St. Richards, but it's present in St. Richards, and it's something I'm deeply grateful for. And what's what's great about that too is. You and Catherine, though, also know you bring your, your children to a school that reinforces what you try to do at home. Uh, and it's, it's sort of this collaborative work that you have together that you trust that the school that you bring your kids to um, also uh, instills the value, the discipline, the hard work that you try to do at home. One last thing um, I, would, I would ask of you is, is could you maybe just touch on uh, the value and the importance as we come together to celebrate our G3 six years and and every year it raises uh, funds that are necessary, um, and then they're, they're necessary uh, in this case for an endowment. And could you maybe speak a little bit about the importance of the endowment to St. Richard's, what it means uh, for our students and their families, um, even our faculty, uh, but just, just for the overall strength uh, and, and hope going forward for our school? So I'll, I, I'll answer this question um, Autobi autobiographically, but hopefully in a way that gestures uh, towards what the endowment does, I think, for St. Richard's. So when I think about the individuals and places where my life was transformed, expanded, um, the places that have made me who I am today, they are undoubtedly the schools that I have attended. Um, I, did not, I did not grow up going to an independent school, but after high school went to independent schools that had endowments that enabled students like myself to attend and to have their life utterly transformed. And I think the endowment does a couple of things. One, it is the rising tide that lifts all boats. This is, it benefits everyone for, um, regardless of need to have a robust endowment to make this school have the best possible teachers and resources for all to learn. And I think it also enables us to bring into our community students and families, regardless of financial, um, to, to have a student body that reflects the world in which we live. And so the endowment, I think, makes possible an education um, that instills knowledge and values for a lifetime to all who, who are interested um, in, in receiving that kind of education. So it is a difference maker in the lives of our families. And it is a difference maker and an invitation to those who have not yet entered into our community. Well, Father Ben, thank you uh, for being with us today. Um, and, and I speak, I think, on behalf of all of us here at St. Richard's, um, whether it's, it's current families or, or families who have been with us for a long time. Um, thank you for what you do as our chaplain. Uh, thank you for, for bringing that aspect of faith to the school, but also to our families that aren't of the same faith, how it is that uh, our common human decency and the dignity of one another uh, shines through with our chaplain, and in this particular case, with you and what you do here. And uh, we greatly appreciate it and appreciate your time with us today. Thank you. My name is Annie George. I'm an eighth grader. Um, in school, I'm involved in our SGA. I'm a class representative. I'm also involved in the many math activities that um, one of our teachers coordinates. Um, some of my hobbies include the arts. I love to draw and sketch, and I also love music, whether it's singing or even just creating music. My name is Jade Springer. I am in eighth grade. I am the president of SGA. I am in Givers, Green Team, and Newspaper. Some of my hobbies are interacting with my friends, hanging out with family, and listening to music. Um, I would say all the opportunities that we get here at St. Richard's. Um, the French Back to Back program, getting to choose a language in sixth grade, going to Washington, D.C., and all the opportunities we get in clubs and positions we, we get to take or um, lead. And it really just helps with being more confident and being able to run something and be more independent. As someone who loves music and all sorts of creative arts, one of my favorite classes would have to be the music classes. And in those classes, we just get to 
the every year, every grade will probably have some sort of performance, whether it's playing handbells or it's putting on our own play on our gymnasium stage. And because those students are getting those experiences ever since we're young, they're learning to step up. They're learning to take those roles that they want and to be, be proud on stage and just be so much more confident. And I think that's a great example. Those experiences are so important and they lay such a strong backing for the students so they can understand how to be confident people, especially when they move on to high school. So I think an important part that is enforced in kids when they're young and it just becomes natural as they get older is this attentiveness to be a good citizen, whether it's through kindness, whether you're just going to help someone, invite them to your game on the fields, or if you're going to um, step up for what you believe in, it's these values of being a good citizen. It's promoting this idea that you have this good inside you and your job in this world is to spread that good everywhere. And I think that's something that's just gonna stick with me as I grow older. Something that would stick with me as I grow older would be public speaking and time management. Again, we have all these opportunities to be able to go up on a stage and speak to a crowd of people. And I really feel like after having all of that experience here at St. Richard's, I'll be able to take that with me and know that once I get up on a stage, I will be confident in what I'm saying and believe in what I'm saying and know that I can represent St. Richard's for years on only because of that experience here. I feel like our donors are very hidden. There's a lot the students don't really realize that they do for us. And I think it's important to recognize them. So thank you for everything you've done. Even if we haven't recognized it, there are people who appreciate it. We really appreciate all that you do for St. Richard's. Thank you. We're joined by our head of school, Mr. David Amstutz. David, thank you for being with us again this year. My so as we come now and we talk about the gift of grit that we have here at St. Richard's, could you maybe explain a little bit about grit and how you see it here? We were, uh, during my first tenure here, we were trying to figure out how to condense the experience at St. Richard's into something that kids could really remember. So we wanted to keep it short and keep it simple. And in a conversation with Ellen Crabb, uh, she said something that really struck me. It's, there is a goodness therein at St. Richard's. So I thought, you know, she's got it. There, there is a goodness. It's, it's unusual at uh, places like this. Secondly, then we wanted to figure out a way to describe this notion of our kids trying lots of different things. We, we want them, they, they do try many things while they're at St. Richard's, and we want them to continue doing it for the rest of their lives. So what do you come up with there? And the word gumption came up. So I like that. It's not a word that's used as often as it used to be in society, so it's, it seemed to fit with St. Richard's. So now we have two words that start with G. You're almost on the alliteration path, whether you want to be or not. <laughs> So the final concept we wanted to incorporate into all of this was this, this notion of if you're trying things often, you're going to fail some. And what do you do then? Do you, do you quit? Do you say, I'm no good at this and go away? Or do you keep at it? So this notion of tenacity and perseverance. And so grit seemed to describe it. It started with a G and hence the three Gs. When you talk about those three Gs, obviously the things that are associated with our faculty, our staff, um, but most especially with our students. Could you maybe talk a little bit about how it is that you see grit uh, in our students? Yeah, so, so grit looks different at St. Richard's depending upon which age group of students we're talking about. With our youngest students, say a pre-K or JK student, um, grit often is really about self-control, really something we work on at, at St. Richard's. I once had uh, a faculty member from a school, another private school in town come by and attend chapel and she was blown away at how well our students behaved in chapel, self-control. And she said, where do you get these students? I said, we don't get them, we, we make them. So again, going back to our youngest students, grit uh, for some of those kids is self-control in terms of being able to can they stay in their spot during morning sharing. 
Uh, when they come in from recess and they've seen a great bug, can they control themselves until it's their turn to talk uh, about this? It might also be, frankly, not telling on your neighbor for the third time that day. So <laughs> right. uh, it, it starts out pretty simple. As we get older and the students evolve, obviously um, something like uh, seventh or eighth grade, where we're really beginning to study difficult concepts, grit might reveal itself through not giving up with a difficult math test, really staying with it, getting online for a little tutoring, going in for extra help, and staying with it so that you get that concept and, as we like to say, turn into one of Mr. Z's you know, big math dogs, as he would say. Uh, I think also in our performing arts and our athletics, uh, those are very public activities, and if you struggle or you fail a bit, lots of people see it. So you, you've got a decision to make at that point. Am I going to kind of shut down? I, I won't sing any more solos. You know, I'll never drive to the basket because I might miss a layup again. Or are you going to keep doing it? And I think we really encourage our kids to keep at it. So they, they learn to deal with failure. They learn it's part of life. And uh, that's the grit of staying with something that we're really Well, you know, to follow up on that, obviously, you know, probably better than all of us uh, in, in the field of education in particular. 2020 was an extraordinary year. Even the beginning of 2021 uh, is, is extraordinary as well. So could you maybe speak a little bit about how you have seen uh, grit being demonstrated by our student body, even our faculty, if, if you will, uh, through this extraordinary time uh, and what grit, how grit has really come alive uh, and shown itself. So year. it's a, it's a, it's an important question. I'm glad you asked it. It's a, uh, kind of deeply meaningful to me because uh, this past summer was a scary time for us, a scary time for many schools and many educators. We, we just didn't have enough information to know what we were dealing with and how to proceed. And, uh, and yet we stayed with it and our faculty hung in there. And even some of our older faculty and those who were immunocompromised trusted us, uh, knew that we were gonna take every precaution and try to do the right thing. But we really didn't know if all the plans we made uh, were going to work. Nobody quite knew um, actually what was going to work and what wasn't going to work. And uh, uh, the day I remember so vividly is the first day of school. Uh, we had all sorts of different drop-offs set up. And uh, we were particularly worried about our youngest students and whether they would be able to do the things that we needed them to do to keep them safe and keep our faculty safe. And in particular, we were very concerned about masks. Is it, is it reasonable to expect three-year-old to wear a mask. And the cars pulled up on that first day. Those littlest kids got out of the cars, they put on their mask, and they walked into uh, the school by themselves. Uh, typically on the first day of school, certainly not wearing masks, that, that's challenging. But parents walked their uh, the, the new children into school. And it was really quite emotional to see these kids, very grown up, just get it done. And, uh, Thanks to them, thanks to their parents. Uh, we've really had a great uh, start to the school year. And got a bunch of in-person learning and we're back at it again. So, uh, you know, kids can rise to the occasion. They will do what we ask of them if we put the time to help them do it. And really, this is this, the conclusion of this whole piece is that uh, it's a little painful to work with kids and to get them to do the things and to ask a lot of them. But if we will do that, and in turn, if we will develop grit with them, uh, it bodes so well for their futures and, and honestly for the future of our country. Yes, you do see exactly how it is that our students truly have, in some ways, even been models for adults and how they've responded to some of these things. Yeah, absolutely. There's been a lot of heroic acts here at the school, small, often small things by, in some cases, small children. But um, all the way through the, through the faculty, the staff, all of our students, in particular our youngest ones, it, it's really been, uh, really been an amazing experience to watch. It has, and all of it is done. Um, what we do at the school is is obviously for lifelong learners, uh, is what we try to create and develop here. And a big part of that comes from the folks who support us in this G3, and so uh, we thank them for that. And maybe just a brief word on um, the importance of our endowment to our school. Well, every year the endowment is an important source of resources that allow us to do what we do here. It's been particularly important, obviously, in this year. Uh, there have been a lot of additional costs that we've had to face uh, through the pandemic, and, and yet we've really weathered it quite well and been able to uh, deliver the kind of education that St. Richard's is for. So, a uh, special thanks to all the people who support the endowment. We need to keep growing it all the time. 
costs continue to go up, they don't go down over enforcement. And uh, the endowment just provides us with the resources and frankly the security. During a time like this, uh, schools that didn't have any kind of endowment um, were really extraordinarily worried about their continued existence. The endowment is, is so important and, and we need to keep growing it. And, and after I leave St. Richard's, I'll continue to contribute to the endowment. I, I need to see that we're just shy of eight million right now. We'd love to see it get to that. Right, right. Well, with that being said, is there anything in conclusion you'd like to add for the folks uh, who are joining us for our sixth G3 <laughs> event this year? Not a dinner, but our sixth uh, G3 event. I'll just, I'll just say that uh, I stand by the three Gs. Uh, they have weathered the test of time uh, during my two stints here. Um, I think they're important for our kids and all kids and adults. And uh, honestly, during a challenging time for our country, I, I think we'd be well served for, for all people in this country to, to, to remember and to practice the three Gs. Well, listen, um, thank you for being with us today. And um, thank you for your leadership, um, especially during a difficult time. Um, your grit uh, has has truly been the light that has shown the way for, for all of us. As a member of your leadership team, I've, I've seen it every day. And so on behalf of everyone, thank you for what you have done. Uh, we truly appreciate it. And showing that grit starts at the top. And so we appreciate what you have done for us. I, I appreciate that. And every day that I've been associated with uh, St. Richard's has been my honor. Well, thank you to Father Ben, to Danny and Jade, and to Mr. Amstutz for their great words on our three G's of goodness, gumption, and grit. Most especially, a big thanks to all of you, the friends and the families of St. Richard's who have done so much over the years to support this school. Because of your generosity, last year, we raised about $60,000 from this event. Thank you for what you've done. And as we come together this year, we ask you humbly and sincerely to consider what it is that you can do to contribute to the St. Richard's endowment once again. St. Richard's year after year gives nearly a million dollars in financial assistance to families so that they can send their kids to our school. $300,000 of that million comes from our endowment, from the gifts that you make to our school. Thank you for what you've done and thank you for considering how it is that you can help us to make this endowment grow, to give us hope for the future here at St. Richard's. And as a reminder, once again, we have an anonymous donor who is generously offering a dollar for dollar match up to $30,000 to contribute toward the endowment. With that great gift, we hope to achieve once again a $60,000 goal to put toward this endowment. Especially now during this time in which so many families are in need, our financial assistance that comes from our foundation board through the endowment is a tremendous gift to our school. Thank you for your consideration for that. And know that if all of you give within the next week, by Friday, January 22nd, that donor will give that $30,000 directly to our endowment. But please make sure that you see the bottom of your screen. This is all new to me. You see the bottom of the screen, the ways in which you can contribute to this endowment. You can send a personal check and mail it to our school with our address down here. You can also give via credit card on our website through a secure portal. Or if you'd like to make a gift of stock, please make sure that you send me an email and I will get you the information for that stock exchange. Your generosity, and the generosity of so many before us, is the hallmark of the goodness, the gumption, and the grit of this school. Thank you. And let us also remember to thank the great members of our foundation board this year under the leadership of our president, Dan Strahl, and all of those who give their time, their talent, and their treasure on our foundation board. They, who are the great stewards of our endowment, are the ones who make sure that this endowment continues to grow and to thrive and to be ever stronger so that future generations of dragons may come to also know the goodness, the gumption, and the grit that is instilled here. 60 years since this school has opened, and with your help, we will continue to have many, many years of a bright future, 60 more, let us come together and celebrate the goodness, gumption, and grit of this school. And I ask you once again, humility and sincerity on behalf of our entire school, what it is that you can do to help us so that our endowment will bring us a bright and hope-filled future. Now, as we wrap it up, I invite our chaplain once again, Father Ben Anthony, to offer a closing prayer. And thank you for being with us 
joining us for G3 this year. And we hope and we pray we will be in person this coming fall. Thank you, everyone. And now to conclude our time together, a prayer of blessing upon our school. Let us pray. O eternal God, bless all schools, and especially St. Richard's Episcopal School, that they may be lively centers for sound learning, new discovery, and the pursuit of wisdom. And grant that those who teach and those who learn may find you to be the source of all truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, my brothers and sisters, my friends, may you be blessed this day. May your commitment to this school be reflected in the students who leave from it. May we all gather together again very soon.